Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a quick tour around the Squirrel interface to show you everything you'll need to start building your own projects within Squirrel. When you first open Squirrel, this is what you will see. We have a main menu bar, a components library, an object browser, a spreadsheet, a properties panel, and also the mode menu, panel toggle buttons, zoom options, and then right in the middle, this white area here is the canvas. I'm just going to close down these three panels for now, but we will look at each of them again as we go along. Next, I'll turn on the layout grid in the view menu, and this is helpful when arranging items on the canvas. There are layout grid options that you can change if you want to, but these ones are fine for now. The next thing I'm going to do is to change how much of the canvas I can see, and I can do this in the zoom menu. At the moment, the canvas is at 100%, but these scroll bars tell me that the canvas is bigger than the area I can currently see. In here are options to zoom right in, to zoom right out, and also various stages in between but I'm going to select zoom to fit so that the entire canvas will fill the available area. The canvas is where you create the look of your project using components that you select from the component library. Now you can choose from various types of charts, data visualizations, tables, controls, text objects, shapes, media and containers. So I'm going to select a button from the controls category. Notice how the cursor changes to a cross as the mouse moves over the canvas. And then I just need to click to place a button at that location. I can move it by dragging it to a new position using the mouse, or I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard if I just want to nudge it into position. I can also resize it by grabbing these handles and moving those. So while we're here, I'll add a few more items to the canvas. A text label, and that can be a title. A chart, and that will display my data. Two more buttons. And a rectangle that I'll use as a border for my project. I'll just resize and reposition those. Next we'll look at the object browser panel. I'll show it by clicking on this toggle button. The object browser sits to the left of the canvas and it's an accordion type panel with drawers that we can open and close. At the top is the components drawer and this contains all of the items that I've added to the canvas. If I click on any one of these items you will see that the object is also selected on the canvas. The objects are shown in the order in which they were added, so the button is first in the list and the rectangle is last. Going back to the canvas, if I try and select any of these items that were added before the rectangle, I'm not able to because the rectangle is covering them. But we can reorder these layers within the object browser. So I'm going to move this rectangle to the very bottom layer, which will actually be the top of this list. As I click and drag the rectangle, you can see that a black line appears. This indicates where the item will be placed in the stack. I'll keep moving up until the line moves above the first item. And when I let go, the rectangle object moves to the bottom layer. You'll see that now if I try and click on these other objects, I'm able to select them because they are now sitting on layers above the rectangle. We can also use the object browser to hide objects from view by clicking this eye icon and lock them so that they can't be edited by clicking the padlock icon. And these are toggles, so clicking them again makes our objects visible and editable once more. At the bottom of the object browser are two other drawers and these are for functions and connections. Now when you add functions or connections to your project by selecting from this drop down box and clicking the plus button, they aren't visible on the canvas, but they are listed within these drawers so that you can access their properties and edit them as you would a visible component. 
Talking about properties, let's look at the properties panel. We can click on this toggle button to show it. It appears on the right hand side of the canvas and displays the properties of a selected object. So I'll select this button so that we can see its properties. The contents of the properties panel can vary significantly between the different components, but there are two sets of properties common to all. These are the positioning properties at the top and the dynamic visibility properties at the bottom. Aside from both of those sections and depending on the selected component, there may be styling options, background options, data sources, interactivity and many others. So do spend some time looking through the properties of each component. Now properties can be set by simply just clicking options with the mouse. Other properties are set in different ways, such as adding text, using a drop down selector, spinner buttons, and color pickers. But some properties can also be set by using data from the spreadsheet. This process is called data binding. We do have a separate tutorial that fully explains data binding. So I won't go into any more detail on that here. At the top of the properties panel are these arrangement options, and these will highlight when they can be used. So if I just select one item, these aren't available because I can't align an object with itself. But once I select two objects or more, then I have options to align them on the left, center and right, and also the top, middle and bottom. The important thing to remember is that the first item that you select will become the principal, so all other selected objects will be aligned to the principal, and that is indicated by these solid handles. These two buttons are also enabled, and these allow me to distribute three or more items vertically or horizontally so that they are consistently spaced. More arrangement options are available in the Arrange menu. So from here, I'll choose to make all of the buttons the same size. The last panel we'll look at is the spreadsheet. So I'll click this middle toggle button. Now when it's like this, you can't see much of the spreadsheet, but you can increase and decrease the viewable area by clicking and dragging on this top borderline. And you can scroll around either by using the scroll wheel on your mouse or by using these scroll bars. The spreadsheet is what we like to call the brains of Squirrel, and the data that is added or imported into it can be displayed by the components and in some cases also manipulated by them. It has the common functionality of any spreadsheet application. In Squirrel, it is used to store data, to control object property values, to perform calculations and also for dynamic visibility. If dynamic visibility is a new concept to you, we do have a separate tutorial to fully explain what it is and how you can use it. Now all of these panels, the object browser, the properties panel and the spreadsheet can be closed by using these crosses in the top corner of each panel. They can be opened or closed either by using these toggle buttons as we've already seen or by using the view menu. Squirrel has three modes, Design, Debug and Preview, and we can click these buttons to switch between modes. For the most part, you will use Squirrel in Design mode, as this is where you build your projects. But once you start adding objects, data and interactivity, you might switch to Debug mode to check functionality and to see what's happening with the data as the project runs. If you want to see the data and the spreadsheet isn't open, this toggle button still works in debug mode, so you can hide or show the spreadsheet. To view a finished project, select the preview button. The project will look and behave as it would once exported. This export button becomes available and clicking it will give us options for exporting the project for use outside of Squirrel. And that's the end of our quick tour of the Squirrel interface. Do take a look at our other tutorials to help you get started on building your own projects within Squirrel.